Here's another development this year that I think is important going forward. The rise of geo-awareness is at an all-time high. People are talking about climate, resiliency, and other topics that formerly you and I as the geo and viro GIS community talked about. That's actually a, a good opportunity for us as a community to raise awareness even further and connect it to the need for geospatial technology and education. Geo-enablement, people are enabled to use these tools. The survey that I just mentioned being one of many examples. The geotechnologies evolving into the cloud, I would submit to you all that it's even more important to have geotech in the cloud than Google Docs. That's great to have Google Docs. It's great to have Microsoft 365. It's great to have your music in the cloud, right? Accessing ABBA's greatest hits at your fingertips. ABBA was a band. The point is, it's great to have all those things, but it's even more important to have geotechnologies in the cloud because we need to solve these complex issues that are multidisciplinary and complex. Citizen science or community science is important, and that goes back to the 19th century at least, but now pe people being able to instantly map and understand the results from their community or citizen science projects using Survey123 and other tools, iNaturalist, and there's other tools. Storytelling, this whole presentation today, right, folks, is a story map. I don't know why I'm gesturing because I actually have that camera hitting right now. Here it is. Um, Storytelling with maps. Maps have, maps have been used to tell stories for thousands of years, right? We talked about the Babylonian clay tablets in the past, uh, the wood blocks, Alec Drisi's map of, on two big plates of silver from the 1100s. That would have been a hard map to fold. Also a very heavy map, right, folks? But maps have been used to tell stories for a long time. Now they're increasingly a part of storytelling and science. So they're also, and one of the particular areas of interest of mine, is using them for indigenous ways of learning and knowing. So connecting geotechnologies to First Nations, Native Americans, Maoris in New Zealand, and other indigenous people, and how can they effectively use these things in combination or in tandem? That's pretty exciting. Five most important skills in your GIS journey. I'm not gonna go through all these, but I think asking questions is the most important tool. It's the most important skill. Yes, the geotechnologies are important. Yes, working with data and the other things I've got listed, but the most important one, I think, is being curious about the world. So encourage your students to ask questions. Those are the kinds of employees we want at ESRI and elsewhere. Ask questions that your employer is not even asking you. Ooh. And when you're a student, while you're still a student, for those of you that are on that are students, ask questions that your teacher or your professor is not even asking you. Ooh. That's a good skill to cultivate. What is your favorite map? We should talk about that during GIS Day. We're rapidly running out of time, but mine are still the following. The I-2206 Digital Landforms Map of the USA. This was created while I was at the USGS, actually. And um, if you look at that I-2206 Landforms Map, one of the reasons why it's compelling is that it's, it's actually a, um, the first digital representation of a the U.S. in a seamless way using a digital elevation model. So if I scroll into this, I can see landforms of various kinds, the Coteau de Prayer, Llano Estacado, Glaciation, the Basin and Range Province, and many others that I won't spend time zooming and panning around, but it's a fascinating map. And technically, it was a breakthrough for its time. Another one that I love is the fairly new Mars 3D Scene Viewer. This is a great teaching tool. I wrote an article about this called Teaching Exploring Mars with GIS. So this Explore Mars is based on the ArcGIS API. And if I start exploring Mars, I've got a couple of base maps at my fingertips, but I also have other capabilities that I'll talk about in a moment. So the Perseverance Lander, why did it land there? How, what, how big was that crater that it landed in, and so on and so forth. This is really fascinating to be able to do this kind of thing, folks. And it's also great for fostering spatial and critical thinking and some use of geotechnologies, being able to manipulate images, adding base maps and things like that. So another point is that we have GIS on Mars, right? Because that's where, what's what we use to figure out, for example, where landers should land. So th that's that's fascinating, but I think even more fascinating is this, this capability of doing the following, and that is, I'm gonna need to lower eyes some of these windows here 
for a moment. Compare. Here we go. Compare. Ooh, regions. Okay. Now, how big is France? Okay. Place it on Mars. Okay, I'm going to scroll over here. Ooh, wow. Okay. Well, that's interesting. But what if I went to a different part of Mars? What if I went to, let's go ahead and go uh, over here. Oh, wow. I've got a lot of capabilities here at my fingertips. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do is, ah, Olympus Mons. Let's look at a different base map, shall we? Ooh, look at that. That's awesome. Oh, there's some delay in what you can see. So I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to compare again regions, and I'm going to grab France from this map and place it on Mars. Again, if, if, if students don't say that's incredible at this point, I, I, I truly, they must be asleep because to me, this is amazing. You've got Olympus Mons is as big as the width of France from west to east. It doesn't occupy the whole of France from north to south, but it, if you placed Olympus Mons on France, it covers from the Atlantic coast all the way over to Switzerland. That is absolutely fascinating to me. So being able to do this, but also place the Grand Canyon on the Valles Marineris on Mars. Wow, the Grand Canyon is pretty big, right, in Arizona. But compared to the Valles Marineris on Mars, it's, it's nothing. Forget about it. It's pretty wimpy. So teaching about scale, teaching about how to manipulate data, uh, how to change what you're viewing, how to do measurements on here. You can measure the, the width and the, the, you can teach about mathematics, uh, measure the cliffs of the Olympics, Olympus Mons, et cetera. Lots you can do with this one tool. So that's one of my favorite web mapping applications that's pretty new. Um, besides my perennial favorites of GIS geobooks, this year, I read The Last Mapmaker by Christina Suntornvat. That is a young adult book, um, but I think it's for all ages. Um, it's a great book about a fictitious, uh, innovative girl that goes on a voyage and works with the ancient cartographer of her village. And um, it's just absolutely fascinating. My perennial favorites are still The Map That Changed the World, about the world's first geologic map, Longitude by Dava Sobel and the mapmaker's wife about the French survey from the 1730s in Ecuador. And I'm also rather fond of my one of my own books, Interpreting Our World. I would also encourage you to read the Geo Inspirations column in Directions Magazine. I've got some new entries this year. These are all about people making a positive difference with geotechnologies around the world. So please take a take a look at that. And selected messages as we close here today. The map is not the end all goal. Understanding and taking action is the goal, right folks? Also, don't get too attached to the tools. The tools change, the tools evolve. The most important tool is this tool right here, your thinking spatially and holistically and critical thinking brain. And as an illustration, here's a doorstop that was once someone's valued part of their computer architecture. It's an old Mac, as probably some of you know, but here it is. Uh, as a doorstop now. Point is, don't get too attached to the hardware and software. They change, they evolve. The problems and issues are still going to be with us. So nurture that spatial thinking brain of yours. Geo song break. If Marie Osmond had sung about map projections. I didn't know my eyes had once deceived me with continents that I thought were the correct size. But they were only approximations. And actually, they were total lies. Chorus, map projections. Oh, this is so bad. Map projections. Oh, how real those outlines seem to be. But they're only representations of the world that's beneath you and me. Map projections. If Marie Osmond had been singing about map projections, that's what it would have sounded like. Maybe. 
some of you are like, who's Marie Osmond? Point is, she's awesome. She is awesome. And map projections, way of thinking about map projections. And one of my verses in there is that Greenland and Brazil are not the same size. So a little bit of fun there for you, but I hope that's uh, intriguing. Make every day GIS day. That's what I encourage you to do. I even have a video on that very subject. For you all, thinking spatially, every day is GIS day, but I really want to close with the following. I think you folks are the change agents in society. I truly do. A lot of people dream about making a positive difference in the world. A, a lot of people uh, want to do good in the world. You people actually are. You're, you're making a positive difference by the education work that you're doing, by the GIS professionals that are out there listening to this. You are change agents on the landscape, and you're, you're encouraging others to be change agents as well through the colleagues, the contacts, the students that you teach, et cetera. So I really salute you all. You are my heroes, and you are truly making a positive difference on our planet. So again, thanks for being with me on GIS Day, and I hope this has been fun, educational, valuable, and I would love to hear back from you. I know this has been sort of a one-sided thing, but um, please contact me and say, hey, Joseph, I was on your GIS Day live webcast, and uh, you had me thinking about this, and this is what I'm doing with, with my colleagues or in my organization or with my students. I'd love to hear uh, more from, from you going forward. So happy GIS Day. All the best to you. All best wishes for continued success, and uh, we will keep in touch. All right, friends. Thanks again.